Our next session is called Close Companions. Uh, you heard about sort of tax on works specific features. Our next session is um, coming from all of all people that are sort of full time employees of the species file group, speciesfilegroup.org. Again, as I mentioned early on, the things that you see in Taxon Works are really a reflection of the wonderful team and people that we have around. And we have teams and uh, expertise in a couple of different areas. And so you're going to hear from those different areas. And I would encourage everyone to think about what is being talked about in these talks and how that might influence um, your work in general, but also um, how we can better integrate everybody's expertise even in tax on works. So we know it's an ongoing effort for us to, to keep doing that, even though we're sharing offices right next door. So your ideas and insights um, on how we can integrate what you're gonna hear about next all around the world will be most welcome. To start off with, uh, we have Dimitri uh, Mozarin talking about global names. My project is the global names. And uh, here I want to talk a little bit uh, how, um, somebody can use um, uh, things that we develop in global names. So what scientific names are, they are identifiers and these identifiers exist for uh, almost 300 years now and uh, they point to information. And uh, our goal, uh, like our final goal for global names project for, on my side, is uh, to create something like uh, what you see on this slide, except that uh, to make it for everything ever published. Um, and uh, so pretty, mu pretty much making a global name index that points to uh, yeah. important. So here it is. This is an index from a book. And what we want to do is index of uh, all books, uh, all important sites, all important databases, where uh, people enter a name and they uh, get back information that is uh, important for this particular name. Um, and uh, to start with, everything is pretty hard. Uh, gladly, there is a biodiversity heritage library, uh, which already started to collect um, quite a lot of biological open information. They have uh, 60 million pages, uh, 250,000 uh, volumes. And uh, uh, one thing that we uh, can use them for is uh, to make our tools uh, very, very fast uh, and very precise. Uh, so they work with a high quality and very fast. And we do that now. Uh, we're able to um, uh, go through all 60 million pages in 12 hours and create a BHL index that uh, everybody can see on their page. Um, the next step that we can use is uh, Hathi Trust. Uh, Hathi Trust is unfortunately closed source, but uh, we can uh, still have, use their metadata and uh, they can we can use their, um, uh, so uh, they have books, they, uh, they have uh, papers, uh, but no, not only they have it. So if you create an um, uh, index for Hathi Trust, we already cover somewhere, somewhat around 10% uh, of everything ever published. We did try it and uh, uh, with using their uh, computer cluster, we were able to finish the job in nine hours. Uh, that makes us very optimistic that we can do everything. Uh, and the speed of our tools is fast enough. So um, the tools that uh, we make, um, it is, uh, uh, so, uh, we can wait until we make a global name index, but who knows if you even be able to do it. Uh, so to be useful for others, uh, we make tools that are um, designed to be uh, user friendly. Uh, they can be easy to install and they have uh, different ways to access them. Uh, so for example, GenFinder, it finds names like in BHL or anything else. Uh, it has web interface, it has API for people who want to write scripts, uh, and it has command line uh, tool that is simultaneously a web server and a, a tool that you can use. Uh, the same thing for GN parser, which uh, allows to normalize names that are written a little different, uh, has the same things. Uh, GN verifier allows to reconcile names. 
Uh, and on top of everything else, it also has open refine interface uh, that able to be incorporated into open refine. And we have GND, uh, which is the newest one. It doesn't have web yet, but it has API and the command line, and it allows you to compare uh, two data sets together without any database, uh, without any internet. Um, so uh, if we, um, uh, so I will try to show uh, something that um, we can use this inform uh, these tools for. Uh, for example, uh, this is a paper and I want to find names in this paper. Uh, can you see paper? We can. Okay. So uh, this is a paper and uh, what I want to do is to find where in this paper um, uh, there is the data. So um, uh, I click find and uh, this is real time. So you can see it's um, like fraction of a second. We able to find all uh, names uh, that appear in this paper. Uh, if you want more information instead of HTML, we can use JSON. And then we have uh, more uh, information like where name starts, where it ends. And uh, if we want to also, let's say this is a, a plant paper, let's try to uh, see what IPNI has about these names. So we see uh, that these names are verified to IPNI and we can go to a particular page and uh, this particular one is suppressed, interesting. Um, so, um, uh, you can go and get to uh, information Ipni, about this particular name. Um, so, um, uh, and uh, uh, you can use uh, just a plain text, you can use PDF, you can use Word document. Uh, let's say I want to find names in an image. So there is an image. Um, uh, it looks uh, like that, uh, and I want to find names in the image. Um, I click find, it takes a little longer because the image needs to be processed. Uh, but then, yeah, you still can find names that exist in this image. Um, so this is name finding, um, and name finding is uh, very, very fast. Uh, so it is designed to find names and everything. Uh, we still have uh, some issues with uh, uh, false positives uh, that we try to solve next few years. And hopefully when we're done, we will be able to use it for um, uh, global name index. Uh, then uh, we have a, a name verifier or a name reconciliation tool. And in this case, let's say you have a, a, a label label has a uh, start of the genus. This is all you have. Uh, the only thing that you can see is start of the name. You don't you don't know uh, the end of it because a label is bad. And it is bad because the um, uh, specimen is pretty old and it comes from like this 50 years period, right? So you click and you able to find everything that uh, looks like that. Uh, with the uh, uh, limitation in year, uh, with the uh, uh, finding genus and finding species that much. Um, so something like that can be done. Uh, you can just uh, take a bunch of names and uh, uh, resolve them. Um, uh, they uh, get um, information about all of them. And of course, you can do it in JSON or you can do it in HTML, depends uh, what you want. But there is a better way uh, when you uh, use the same thing with Open Refine. Open Refine automatically finds, and uh, Amanda um, will talk more about this. Um, uh, but you you can uh, you can find things, and except that uh, you also can. Um, uh, so a lot of them uh, matched automatically, and some of them you can. Uh, separate, like uh, these names did much, but uh, also didn't much. And for example, you immediately find there is a typo. Um, uh, uh, then you can go and uh, uh, see uh, uh, names that are fuzzy much. So they are not exact much. Uh, there is some problem with the uh, fuzzy matching. 
and uh, uh, you can go and see uh, names that uh, matched only partially. Uh, and uh, another tool that we have is uh, uh, Parser. And Parser allows you to normalize names um, uh, uh, to, to understand what is what. Like, for example, this F is not forma. It is Phyllis for the author. And it allows you to get um, uh, three types of uh, canonical form, how we call it, uh, name without authorship. Uh, so that's all. Uh, this is tools that we have. Thank you. Thanks, Dima. Um, again, I take for granted sometimes thinking that I know everything that global names can do. I, I don't know, think I knew that you could throw images at it, you know, and um, hopefully for those of you who saw that, um, you're, you're you're connecting the dots for your own workflows, your own Excel sheets, um, your own processes as to how you might use global names.